Kuzu Zampo. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning pro project. I am Thukten Senge. This lesson is a mathematics lesson for Key Stage 3, Class 7 and 8. Today, our topic is problem related to square root. Okay, so when we say problem related to square root, before uh, we discuss about the square root, first you have to uh, you have to know what is perfect square. What is perfect square? A perfect square is the product of a whole number multiplied by uh, number itself. A product of whole number multiplied by number itself. Okay, a product of whole number multiplied by itself. Now whole number here. Do you remember whole number? Do you know what is whole number? A whole number is a number sequence that starts from zero. For example, zero, one, two, three, and so on. So example of whole number is like the number from, starting from zero, one, two, three, and so on. Now, <clears throat> let us write down few examples of what is perfect square. Few examples of perfect square. Okay, we know that the perfect square is a product of whole number. Okay, let's take one. One multiplied with one will give us product as 1. If I take 2, multiply it with 2, the product will be 4. If I take 3 and multiply it with 3, my product will be 9. If I take 4 and multiply it with 4, product will be 16. Here, the number like 1, 4, 9, and 16. These numbers, we call it as perfect square. We call it as a perfect square number. Now, I believe that you might have got some ideas about what is perfect square. Now, the problem is, if you are asked, if you are given a number, and if you are asked to find out whether that number is a perfect square or not. So here is a problem. For example, let me give one example question. Let me give you a question as uh, example question is a number okay let's write it as is this number a perfect square okay perfect square. Is this number a perfect square? Let's take an example. Okay, one. Let's say 144. Now, we don't know whether this number is a perfect square or not. Now, to check whether this number is a perfect square or not, we have a method called prime factorization. We can use a method of prime factorization. Here, you can take this number and use the prime factors to divide it. For example, uh, we have prime, prime numbers like 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. 
Let's start with the smallest prime. It is 2. Now, C, to see whether this number is divisible by 2 or not, we have to look at the digit in the unit place, ones place, I mean. Now, if that unit is 0 or even number, we can say that the number is perfectly divisible by 2. So, since we have 4 here, now I can take 2 to divide this number. So, 2, I can't divide 1 by 2, so I have to take 2 digits together. Okay, I have 14 now. So, two, uh, 14 divided by 2. 2, how many times is 14? 2, 7 times, right? Okay, 2, 7 is 14. Now, I, have left, I am left with another digit, that is 4. 2, how many is 4? 2, 2 times. Okay, now again, I have even number here. I will still take 2. Now, 2, how many times is 72? Now, let's take, let's first divide 7. 2, how many times is 7? 2, 3 times, right? If I take 2, 3 times, it will be 6. Now, I have remaining 1 here. 1 in the tens place with 2 is 12. Now, 2 how many times is 12? 2, 6 times. Now, I got the number 36. Still, I have an even number in the ones place. Now, I'll take again 2 to divide this number. 2 how many times is 36? Okay, if you don't know how to divide directly 36, now let's take the number uh, digit by digit. Okay, 2 how many times? It's 3. 2, 1 is 2. Now I have again remaining 1 in tens place and 6 in ones place, right? Together it is 16. 2 how many is 16? 2, 8 times. Now, again I have 8 in the ones place. I can still use 2 to divide this number. Okay, 2 how many is 18? 2, 9 times. Now, my number is not even, neither it is 0. Now I can't use I can't use 2 to divide this number. Now I have to use another prime number. Okay, the, our second smallest prime number is 3. Now let's use 3. Now I know that 9 is divisible by 3. I'll use 3 divided by uh, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is okay, 3. Now since 3 itself is a prime number, I'll stop there. Now my prime factors for the number 144 are 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, 2 times, 3 times, 3. Now, now, our next step is we have to group them in pairs. Okay, we have 2 and 3 numbers, right? The prime factor that is being used uh, in dividing this number is 2 and 3. Now, let's group these factors together. Okay, 2 and 2 together. Another 2 and 2 together. And 3 and 3 together. Now, we have exact pairs in this case. Now, if you have this kind of factors, we will call it as a perfect square. This number is a perfect square. 144 is a perfect square. Now, 144 is the perfect score of what number? Now, to find that one, you just have to take out the common. Okay? This is pair of 2, right? Okay, I will take out the common. This is, again, pair of 2. I will take out the common 2. Now, this is again pair of 3. I'll take up the common as 3. Now, I, if I take this one, so it is 2 times 2 times 3, which means if I multiply 2 and 2, it is 4, 4, 3 is 12. So that means 144 is a perfect square of number 12. Okay, let's see one more example. Example 2. Let's say the number is 200. Now, to see whether this number is a perfect square or not, we'll use the factorization method again. Okay? 200. Factorize it using, again, using the prime factors. I'll use 2. 2 how many times is 2? Two? 2 one times, right? So, 200 times will be 200. Okay. Again, since our units once place, in the once place, the digit is 0, I will again use 2. 2 how many times is 5? Uh, 10. 2 5 times, right? So, 250 times will be 100. Okay. Again, still we have 0 in the once place. I will use 2. 2 how many times is 50? 
So if you don't know how to directly divide it, divide digit by digit. Okay, two, how many times is five? Two, two times is four. So we have one remaining in the ten, uh, tens place and zero in the ones place makes 10, right? So two, how many is 10? Two, five is 10. So that means 225 is 50. Now, since in the ones place we have an odd number, we can't use two now. Now, to use the second uh, smallest prime number, it is three. Now, to see whether this number is divisible by three, we have to add the digits together and see if the, the sum is divisible by three, that means the number is divisible by three. If I add two and five, it will be seven. Seven is not divisible by three, so I can't use three to divide this number. So instead, I'll go with the next prime number, that is five. Now, I know this number is divisible by five because in the ones place, we have five. If the ones place is five or zero, that number is perfectly divisible by five. So five, how many is 25? Five, five times. Since five itself is a prime number, I'll stop there. Okay, the prime factor for this number, 200, here, it is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Now, again, I have to group them in pairs. Okay, pair of 2, pair of 5. But I have remaining one, one prime factor, that is 2. Now, this 2 here doesn't have a pair. Now, if we have a prime a factor, something like this, now we will say that, this number is not a perfect square. So that means 200 is not a perfect square. Now, sometimes, if you are, you may be asked, like, can we, what will be the least number that you will use to multiply so that you can make the perfect square? You just have to get the pair of this number. So that means you just have to multiply with 2 so that you'll get, you'll make the number in number a perfect square. I believe now you might have got some idea how to check whether the number is perfect square or not using a factorization method. Now, I will explain how to solve the problem related to square root. Now, when we, see, uh, we use a symbol for a square root here, something like this. So this is a symbol of square root. And here, square root is just an opposite of what we have seen in the perfect square. For example, in the perfect square, we said that 3 multiplied with 3 will give us 9, right? So this 9 here is a perfect square. Now, it's just an opposite when it comes to a square root. Now, here, root of 9. Okay, example, root of, root of 9, root of 9 will be 3. And if you take like root of 16, it will be 4. If you take root of 25, it will be 5. Because we already know that 3 times 3 will be 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25. Now, what happens is, uh, we don't know whether the number is perfect square or not. Now, in that case, we use the algorithm to uh, find the square root of a given number. Okay, let's take an example. Okay, uh, let's say that the number is like uh, 37. 37, root of 37. Now, we don't know the exact uh, we don't know whether this number is perfect score or not. Let's assume that we don't know this number is perfect score or not. Now, I'll explain using the algorithm. 37. <clears throat> okay, now, when you use the algorithm, there, is, there are three main steps that you have to keep in mind. The first one is always group the digits in two. And that grouping should always happen from the right hand side, from this side. And it should be grouped from right to left. Now, since we have only two digits here, these digits can be grouped in one group. Okay, now 
The second step is, now we have to take the uh, uh, perfect square, which is close to this number here. And in the third step, we have to double the top and write it on the column here and add the space. Okay, I will show you that. Okay, now the first, first perfect square that is close to this number, 37, will be like, if I take 4 and 4, it is going to be 16. 5 and 5, it is going to be 25. 6 and 6, it is going to be 36. 7 and 7, it is going to be 49. So, this number is between 36 and 49, right? So, I can take 6 here. 6 times 6 is going to be 36. Subtract this number. So, 7 subtracted with 6 will give us 1. Now, I don't have any other numbers to bring down. So, I'll stop here. So, I can estimate that the square root of 37 is approximately 6. Now, <clears throat> I can also further divide it, the number using the decimal. But right now, I'll stop here. Okay, let's see another example. Uh, in this uh, example, let's take like uh, three digit numbers. Okay, let's say this is example one, this is example two. Okay, this time we are going to take three digit number. Uh, let's say our number is 222, two, two. 222. Now, we don't know this number is a perfect square or not. If I know this number is a perfect square, I can take a, a number no? directly. But I don't know. Now I have to find, you, find the square root using the algorithm. Okay, I told you that first group the digits in the group of two, right? And that grouping should always happen from, happen from should always uh, start from the right hand side. Okay, we have two, two, and two, right? These two will be in the same group. This will be in the another group. Now, what I can write is two, one group, 22 in another group. Now, let's divide this one. Now, second step, I have to take the perfect square close to the group, right? The number there. Okay. I have the number 2 there. What is the closest perfect square that I, I can take for that number 2? So it is 1, right? 1 times 1, it is 1. If I take 2 times 2, it is going to be 4. I can take 4 because I have just 2 there. Now, subtract this number. 2 subtracted with 1 will give us 1. Now bring down, unlike in the division, we have to bring whole group together. Okay, this time we have 22. 2 and 2. Now, next step, double the top, right? Double the top. Now, in the top, we have just one. Multiply, one multiply with two will give us two. And add the space. Now, in that space, you are going to take a number, and to, uh, that same number should be taken here, and this number will multiply a number here. And that number should get our product quite uh, near to this number, or exactly this number. Now, uh, let's take a few numbers and see which number give us the closest product. Okay, 20, let's say we are taking 5. 5. Okay, so 5. So multiply with 5. 25 multiply with 5. 5, 5 is how much? It's 25, right? 25. I'll take 5 and put it here. Okay, I'll again multiply 2 and 5. 2, 5 is how much? Is 10, uh, 2, 5 is 10. Added with 2, it is 12. Now, look at that number. So, here, the number is only 122. But our number here, it is 125. So, that means we can't take 5. So, now, we'll take 4. Okay? 4. 4. Now, 4 multiplied with 4 is, how much? 4, 4 is 16. 4 multiplied with 2 is how much? 2, 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Now subtract this number. So it's going to be, uh, here we have 2, and here we have 6. So since we can't subtract 6 from 2, we have to borrow. Now when we borrow, our number is 12. The number here is now is 12. Now, 
the leftover here, the number which is being left here, it is one because we have already given one as a borrow in borrowing. Okay, now 12 subtracted with 6 will give us 6. Now here we have just 1. Now we can't again subtract 9 from 1, we have to borrow. So it's going to be now 11 subtracted with 9 is going to be 2. Now since we don't have any, any, digits, any group to bring down, so we'll stop here or if you want you can write it in a decimal. Okay, <clears throat> so it's going to be approximately now 14. The root of 222 is approximately 14. I hope you got something from this solving. Now, now you may be feeling like where will we use this kind of problems in our real life situations? For example, uh, like it is this square root and the perfect square. It is related to the square type of uh, diagrams and figures. For example, if you have a field, a square field, and if you know the area of that one, so you can directly find, you, can, you will be able to find the, the dimensions of your field. For example, okay, let's say, Okay, let's say we have a question, something like a square field area of four hundred eight. 4,823 meter square. Now you are asked to calculate the side length. Okay, let's look at the question once again. The question says, a square field has an area of 4,823 meters square, and you are asked to calculate the side length. So in this case, you have to use the idea of perfect square and square root. So can you solve this? This question is your assignment. Uh, thank you all for your attention. I'll see you 